Live Jerome Party Studio. Live Jerome Harden Studio. Live from Jerome Harden Studios. This is the last of my discast. I will say about so you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll see you later. What's up on JR? You sure alright? Let's get started. Live from Jerome Harden Studios. This is the latest on my update that I'm willing to tell you about. So as you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll tell you the latest. Hello, my name is Jerome J. Harden, founder and graphic designer of Jerome Harden Studios. So today's topic we're going to talk about today is uh, shortage wars. And what I mean by shortage wars is um, remember every time you go to the store or a hardware store or even Walmart, like Dollar General, and you look for some specific some specific items that you need in necessity of life, such as batteries, food, soap, um, all that stuff you need to survive. But if you, by the time you go to the store and you look at the aisle and you look for a specific item and you see that it's out, and actually, have you ever been to three stores for the same thing? They're all out and all stuff, all fresh out, out of stock and all that stuff. Well, um, actually, sometimes the reason behind the shortages is people are either greedy, selfish, or they just don't even care about one another. And um, what made me think that people are selfish, sometimes people can fight over certain products and start brawling it all out in the parking lot and people will get into arguments and sometimes hurt each other that land people in the hospitals. Um, this is why prices have been going up on store shelves lately because of the shortages and uh, truck drivers who refuse to work and shortage of truck drivers as well. And let's not forget, um, remember that I told you about these restaurants that have short staffing? Well, it continues and it's starting to get worse as the Omicron, or however I pronounce it, variant is climbing in the United States and more people are dying because, you know, the government doesn't care really. So, um, so what has the coronavirus did so far as far as the economy? Well, um, to start off, more teachers have quit. More children are going to, uh, distance learning or uh, virtual learning because you know there's not enough teachers to fill classrooms to teach the students what needs to be taught and I even saw this one video of a kid uh, or a teenager that is standing up to the teacher because the teacher giving it out giving kids packets and all that stuff and the student had had enough and they, he asked the teacher um why aren't you teaching the students anything unless it's your job to not teach you should be teaching them something. And he was so upset that he walked out of the classroom and learned his own thing. So, of course, the teacher didn't even do anything. The school probably didn't do anything. That's what I mean right there. More teachers are quitting because I guess the administrators want them to just give them out packets, let the children do the work on their own. And, you know, you know we got so much internet now that... Um, we got Google, we got resources. Uh, back then, we don't even have all that. We have uh, encyclopedias and stuff. And when I was in school, those teachers um, really taught us on the board how to do certain stuff such as math, teach us economics, teach us history. But since we got the internet now, no, I hear teachers are barely yapping at this moment because they don't want to open their mouth. They're too lazy to talk. So um yeah i should be talking about this topic right now i should be talking about another topic i just bring it all up so i thought i want to share with you guys on the future of this uh a video that i was going to talk about uh what you have been taught in schools and i think um we're going to talk about in the next topic but um why i have the script in front of me right now is um our, our as uh are our schools safe um so we're going to talk about that in another the next topic of Jerome Hart students. So, uh, back to the topic I was talking about, which is shortage war. So, um, yeah. So, the reason why we have so many shortages, like I said, shortage of truck drivers, shortage of uh, store workers, 
shortage of food workers, um, everybody quitting. And, you know, and once uh, the products or certain products are available, it's almost gone after a few minutes. And, you know, and sometimes people get fought over it. And, you know, if you go to the store and you look for a specific product you want, I mean, of course you, you'll get upset about it and just cuss a lot of people off for hogging it all up. But, you know, that's life right there. Um, and, um, by the way, um, What's happening outside of my house right now, um, it's supposed to be snowing today, but so far I don't see any snow, but I did capture, um, a few, um, a few moments when it was snowing outside and it rained just, it was raining at first and then it snowed. So after it got cold for a few days, the snow turned hard and crunchy. So, um, yeah, so. I wanted to share with you guys what it was like outside in Huntsville, Alabama, where we got all this beautiful snow, and then after a few days, it was gone. So, it's kind of very disappointing that um, it can be gone for a few days, but we live here in the South, and we do not get that much snow, really, except for special occasions. So, um, I'm very blessed the last time we had snow. Of course, well, I made snowballs with it. So, um, and I can tell you... Um, if, if while while all this crazy work has been going on, you know, and that's the reason that uh, that's the, another factor of shortages too. Um, all this crazy work that has been going on. So um, yeah, and uh, don't forget um, uh, it's not about shortages of food necessities. It can also be PlayStation Five, video games, uh, blankets, shoes, um, clothes. Uh, you know, uh. Every stuff that you desire, um, it can be gone in a few minutes if you just look at it. And next time you come back for it, it can be gone. So, yeah. And, um, let's see. Let me look at my phone here. Um, damn, it's from the 12% main, but hopefully it can hold out this long. So, let me type in, um, come on, come on. Shortages in stores. Or let's start with the shortages in the stores. What? All right. So, why is there shortages in a, a food in grocery stores? Let's look at this. In. All right. So what it says right here: grocery stores across the country have experiences experienced shortages due to supply chain disruptions caused by back-to-back snowstorms. Is this even true? It could be other factors. Like I just said, um, truck drivers, people quitting, um, uh, people being greedy, uh, and, and, uh, of course, a high demand, so, um, so that's why prices have been going up, so, um, because everybody wants the same thing, and nobody expected that they want the same thing for such one product, and the shortage of workers from the surge of COVID-19 cases, shoppers paid, Six point more percent more for groceries in November 2021 compared to November 2020, according to the Consumer Price Index. Well, why are shelves empty? Well, uh, shelves empty have been store shelves were empty at one point last year because of the beginning of the pandemic. Grocery stores across the United States are seeing empty shelves that once held products ranging from bread to produce to meat as a surge in COVID-19 cases due to the Omicron variant as another layer of complication to a system already strained by supply chain issues and shortage workers. So, and also, is there a meat shortage in 2022? I mean, I gotta read that. All right, so what it says right here, um, Tyson expects its margin to be 9% to 11% in fiscal 2022, which began October 1st. Tyson Beef's remarkable results reflected how much demand at home and abroad outstripped available supplies, supplies of beef since the COVID-19 pandemic began. The shortages is almost acute in beef plants because they're much more labor-intensive. 
So, um, because of COVID-19, not only more people are killed, but more cows are killed as well. Because people want more beef. Wow. Okay. Are grocery stores on the decline? Um, of course not, because I see in my area more people are going to grocery stores. Uh, a lot of grocery stores in my area are being built as of right now. Um, now stores are fully stocked and grocery stores are seeing much as 5.5% drop in quarterly same store sales. A noticeable decline in what should be a steady business, report cranes. So, um, and I was, I wanted to, uh, read all this right here and, and read it for y'all. That's why I've been reading right here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just think of this. Um, my, uh, you, what's going on behind the factories? Uh, a lot of labor, intensive, intensive labor, of course. Um, people are quitting, of course, people, you know, getting sick and stuff and, you know, people are dying. No, that's crazy right here grocery store shortages over okay. here are some of the reasons why and I'm going to look up some of the uh, intense topic that where our people are getting to arguments people oh I mean grocery store shortages are back and here are some of the reasons why okay so take a look at this picture right here um you see this right here um you see this is a grocery store shelf and what's supposed to be food and stuff in it is no longer there so imagine going to a store and see a, a store full of empty shelves like that and you know it's just like the end of the world here and you ask yourself is this going to be the end of the world so um yeah let me turn my phone back on so i'm going to read this and it's going to be fun so this is from the business and it's coming from npr.org so you can look this up online and you can look it up look this topic up as well so let me read this it says no you are not imagining some grocery store shelves have are bare sorry let me read it over again no you are not imagining it imagining it some grocery stores shelves are bare again, conjuring bad memories of spring 2020 for many. Social media is rifled with images of empty supermarket aisles and signs explaining the lack of, of the available food in other aisles. Stores such as Aldi have apologized to customers for shortages. The reasons for the dwindling stock are numerous. According to the food interest, industry analysis and some and include some issues that impacted retailers at the beginning of the pandemic as well as challenges that have cropped up more recently. We are seeing the perfect storm. Phil Lampert, Lampert editor of the website supermarketguru.com, told NPR. Lampert said the Northeast is facing some of the worst shortages now. Due in part of recent winter storms that snarled transportation routes, but that could change with the weather. But Nate Rose, the communications director for California Grocers Association, said that any comparison to March 2020 is not quite right. There are some issues with out of stocks, but it tends to be a situation where if you go to a store on a Tuesday night, maybe something's out of stock. But by Wednesday, sometime it's back in store. Rose Tort told NPR. Everyone become really reliant on kind of that just in time supply chain he added. And I think we're seeing what we're seeing is things that are just a little behind right now. Some conservatives have begun using hashtag hashtag bear shells Biden to blame the current administration for the shortages. Even though grocery stores experience serious supply problems under do President Donald Trump too. So why are we blaming presidents for shortages if people are being selfish or people are quitting? I mean, it's not the president's fault. They're trying to do the best they can to fix the problem, not to make it worse. 
I mean, you gotta start blaming people, folks. Seriously. And this is why I don't like politics. I don't even want to talk about politics. And I'm going to be talking about that, too, in the future newscast, too. And let me continue reading. Here are some of the reasons driving the current supply shortages at your local supermarket. The all the Omicron variant. I can't even pronounce this right. All cream on whatever, whatever. What I've read this virus is the highly contagious, highly contagious new COVID-19 variant that's caused record infections in the U.S. is doubtedly one of the biggest stressors on the food industry right now. Grocery store workers are catching the virus in higher numbers, calling out sick, making it tougher for markets to keep shelves stocked. The store themselves are finding it harder to source products because of the new strength. Vivek Sankaran, CEO of the grocery store chain Albertsons, I never heard of it, said in an earnings call that the company had been hoping to recover from the recent supply issues, but Okrima, man, I'm not going to say that, put a dent in that. There are some more supply challenges, and we would expect more supply challenges over the, over the next four to six weeks, so Quran said on Tuesday. It's more than grocery stores, though. There are workers all across the food industry supply chain who are getting set and staying home, packing food protection, manufacturing, shipping, and dist distribution. The food company, Conagra, the parent company of brands such as Duncan Hines and Healthy Choice, it just once seen a rise in Man, I'm not gonna say that again. Alcremont driven ips epitensi. Man, there's a lot of words I can't even pronounce right. President and CEO Sean Connolly said in the earnings call last week, it's entirely reasonable for all of us to project that the next month or so could remain strained within the supply chain as Alcremont runs its course, Connolly said. Labor shortages, like I just said earlier in the newscast. In addition to workers becoming infected with COVID-19, there are those who have simply quit. Well, I don't blame them at that point because they are trying to avoid to catch the virus. Um, of course, there are many ways you can make money online. So if you're trying to plan that, don't give your hopes up just yet. I had to go through the same thing when I was looking for my talent. Um, Limper said... The pandemic has turned grocery store shelves. Gro Limper said the pandemic has turned grocery stores into battlefields. This is what I'm talking about earlier in the newscast. People are fighting over supplies and groceries and parts that they are demanding. Limper said the pandemic has turned grocery stores into battlefields with employees required to work in person throughout the pandemic. Explain food shortages and the new public health measures to customers. Try to keep themselves safe and healthy in the process. As a result of that, a lot of people said, hey, I don't need this. They left their jobs in the supermarket. A recent survey conducted by the National Grocers Association found that many of its member retail and wholesale grocers reported operating their stores with 50% of their normal workforce. Supermarkets are beginning to hire, are beginning to offer higher pay, better benefits, and even tire security to attract new applicants. Trucking and shipping. Truckers are also in short supply, though there are some disputes about how bad their situation really is. Trucking companies are offering higher wages to attract workers, but employment levels are still aren't high enough to meet the demand for ground transport. Um, in December, the White House announced a plan to bolster the trucking industry, which is makes it making it easier for drivers to get to get commercial driver's license or CDL CDLs. Severe weather and climate changes. Um last month, December was really warm. It was almost like summer, but Climate change isn't a new problem, but it's it's one that's still vexing the food industry. 
Severe weather events are becoming more frequent and intense across the world as the planet warms. And according to Limpert, growers are yielding less corn and soy to feed farm animals. Which is having a downstream impact on the price availability of meat, eggs, and dairy products in Brazil. Heavy rains are inducting the coffee fields and other crops, which is limiting production. Severe weather is also making it harder to move food around. In recent storms in Washington State, prompting the closure of major roads and slow the shipping of food to Alaska, where supermarkets told customers the one, two punch of severe weather and shipping delays were to blame for barren shelves. Wow. That's crazy. So, we got a planet that is warming, severe weather, climate change, and people getting greedy, and all that stuff. So, wow, that is crazy, folks. That is really crazy. And you can go and look this article up yourself, um, I, as I just read it. So, um, I'm going to save the screenshot now. Yeah. All right, let's exit out of here. Um, but anyways, yeah. So, um, I hope you enjoyed me reading this uh topic. Or what? <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this reading me reading this topic on what's been going on and why there are shortages in stores. Um, so climate change, um, shortages and people quitting, people getting sick. You know what I mean? That's getting crazy, but. I didn't want to believe it at first, but now it's just a reality. And I keep asking myself, is this virus going to be around forever? And not to mention that, Walmart is start going to start closing at 8 instead of 11 now because of this. So, just imagine, um, like, if you never have a 24-hour Walmart ever again. I mean, you got to think about this. Um, and, you know, there was so much in the world has been going on lately. You don't even recognize as much if, if you are a kid right now. Um, and now we're adults now. It's, you know, you've seen all these problems, all these fights, you know. You got to defend yourself and all that stuff. I mean, it's not really fun to be an adult, really. So, um, I'm going to talk about uh, what it's like to be a kid. Um, and, you know, when we were kids, we don't have anything. Thing or much to worry about so we got to think about that if you thought that um you want to move out of your parents house so bad they've been yelling at you and all that stuff I mean I take my advice I will wait till we're I'm I'm fully uh prepared and stuff have enough money to move out and stuff so just don't rush wait and just be grateful that you're not homeless so um, I'm going to end this newscast from there and I'm going to talk about are our schools safe in another newscast. So I hope you're really ready for this one. And this is no another issue that we're going to talk about. So I hope you guys are ready and tune in for another newscast. So I'm Jerome Harden, founder and graphic designer of Jerome Harden Studios. I am out. See you next time. Peace.